up your energy. Y'all look good, it feels good. Woo! Oh, I love this energy in this place today. I feel the love, y'all. Oh my God, are y'all ready to get started? Yeah! Because I know I am. As I've said before, I promised that I would share my life with you guys. So I want to have a, I want to give y'all a J-HUD exclusive today. Okay? But before I go any further, I always say like, I like to stop and take the moment in. So I want to share this moment with you guys. So anybody in here, I know y'all know Glamour Magazine. Do you love it like I do? You do? Okay, so. Every year, they choose a group of women who, who's made a huge impact on the world. And the past honorees include women who have impacted and inspired my life just the same, like Michelle Obama, Viola Davis. And I am so honored that this year I was named as one of Glamour's Women of the Year. This is... Thank you so much for that. It's such a big deal to be mentioned in the breath of people like that. And a lot of times when you are considered inspiration, and, um, and I know it happens to all of us in this room, you don't even realize that you are, you know? And, and the important thing is the impact that we get to make each and every day. And I don't want to get emotional, because I will. Again, this is a moment in my life that I want to stop and take it in. And I can't help but to go back to my grandmother. And her, you know, the, the things that they leave you with. And people always ask me, Jennifer, how do you get through all the things that you do in your life every day? And all I could think about is my grandmom said, you take one day and one step at a time. You know? And sometimes we all get overwhelmed. It doesn't matter who you are, what class you're in, what you do. We're all human and we all go through life and we all have dreams and goals and things we want to achieve and accomplish. But sometimes when you're in a position like this, like I realize I get to be on this platform every day, but then sometimes people forget there's a human under there. And so this is one of those, this is why it's important to be able to have these moments and share it with you all. So you see, just it means that much more to us too, you know what I mean? At least for myself, and I don't take it lightly. So it made me sit back and think of all the women that has had such a huge impact on my life. And so when I got ready to step out, I'm like, I felt a bit overwhelmed. And then I always go back and I say, well, what would my grandmother say? And I go back to those teachings. So my biggest inspiration starts back as early as my late grandmother, Julia Kate Hudson. And that's what came to my mind. And then when I get super weary, I go to my mom and I always, when I get troubled and I can't figure it out, and she say, Jenny, all you can do, it's the simple things. All you can do is the best you can do. And those are the things that I like to go by to be able to get by through whatever I'm dealing with. And then to look up and say, wow, I get to be one of those women that get to inspire the world just by simply being. And I want you all to know nothing is just. You can impact somebody by just getting up in the morning, you know? by trying each and every day, you know, by achieving your goals, by living. Those are the things that help inspire somebody else because somebody is always watching you. But always make sure to be a positive influence and, and set out, a, you know, you wanna make a positive impact on others. Ooh, okay. Okay, okay, getting back to my covers. I had my mommy because now I'm a mama and I get to give my sins and all of that stuff. So these covers just came out today. So you all are getting a J Hud exclusive. Y'all want to see my cover? Yeah. Ah, drum roll, please. We're about to see it together. I'm seeing it together with you guys for the first time. Okay, I want to see. I want to see. Okay, Whew, here it is. recreate my pose. Can y'all give me y'all a uh, glamour woman pose of the day? I see a lot of inspiration out there. You got the pose, ma'am? What you got? Okay, and then it's a nice little spread too. So this is just the cover and I'm seeing myself for the first time. 
I like to take it in because these are the moments that we work hard for. And I can only hope to continue to inspire the next little Jennifer Hudson or the next little girl with that's aspiring and that has dreams and, you know, whatever they're dreaming up. So I hope that can inspire them just the same. You want to see some more shots? Because yeah. I love a picture. Oh, my God. So this shoot, come on, pull me up. Okay. You like that? I got to shoot this in the hills of, at, at, at one of the mansions. And the inspiration is it was taking up space, women taking up space. Wow. And so you see the train. Am I not giving you some drama to take up some space with? And having an uh, impact. Oh my God. And that look was real heavy, too. You know, as they say, as my cousin rises, oh. there is another moment. And that dress. Imagine a dress where it take about four or five people just to hold your train, honey. Look at this. <laughs> oh my God. And then it was what gave me peace. Sometimes I look for things to give me peace within the day. Oh, that's the singing supermodel with curves right there. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, look, I love a photo. Let's see. You see the hat? How I got it? I got that from the mothers of the church. The way they tip their hat to the side. We had to bring it to the fashion world. See, all y'all inspire me in some way. You see the teachings that have taught me? Okay, but then I'm an animal lover. I, look, I look fancy in that, don't I? But do you know, in the middle of the shoot, it was a neighbor dog that came to the set, and he ran all across the train. <laughs> but our job is to sell the moment. I'm like, they don't know what's going on. Okay, dog, get back. Let me get this shot right here. <laughs> And then I got to see, at, we shot at a mansion in Beverly Hills. And as soon as I got out of the car, it was a talking bird. <laughs> and I talked that bird down. We even had lunch together, y'all. <laughs> Look, here we go, here we go. <laughs> and the highlight of it all. Wait. Oh, my God. <laughs> so now I'm looking for me a bird that I can eat lunch with and have a good old conversation with because I love me some animals. But, and that was the highlight of all of this. So sharing this, Anna, it was just amazing to share it with such phenomenal women. You know, I, do you want to see the rest of the ladies, the other honorees? Let's pull up their covers because this is what makes it hit different when you can be in, in, in company of such impactful, powerful women. That's the class of the 2022 Women of the Year. I am in such, such great company. Oh my God, all of these women. They have beauty, they have brains, and they have power. And some of them, oh, some of them got some powerful arms. Okay, so the producers and I, we decided to make up a little game to play with you guys to see w which one we could discover who, who muscles is who. All right, can y'all gonna help me out with that? We're gonna see some pictures, and we're gonna see who, I, it ain't me, because Jennifer ain't got nothing. I can't do no push-ups for you, okay? I don't have no muscles at all, but we're gonna see whose arms is the strongest. Is it Michelle Obama? Is it Viola Davis? Is it Angela Bassett or Regina King? Let's see if we can figure it out, okay? We're calling this Armed and Fabulous, honey. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, good luck. Here's the first one. Hmm. Do those arms look like Michelle, Angela, or Regina? See, this is tough. You think it's Michelle Obama? I think it's from a film. So I'm going to say it's Viola. Let's go with Viola. Let's see if we're right. We're right! We're right! Okay, okay. Let's see if we can. Let's try one more. Okay, let's see. Let's see who... Ooh. Oh, you know it like that? I'm gonna go with Angela. Angela? Angela Bassett. Let's see if it's Angela Bassett. I told y'all they was tall. Okay, okay, let's try, let's try one more. Tag, I thought I had that one. Okay. All right, who, who do you think this one belongs to? You say Michelle? Anybody else? We going with Michelle. I trust y'all. Michelle Obama? Are we right? It is! Ah! Okay, 
Y'all are good. Okay. Okay. Y'all are good because it sure ain't Jennifer. Oh my God. Who you think this is? I mean, they. Okay, well, let's see if it's, let's see if it's Angela. It's Angela! I'm coming too. I gotta get my arms together so I can be armed and fabulous with the rest of these ladies. I'm so happy to be a global woman. All right, we have a great show. We'll be right back. Okay, I can't wait for this. Our first guest is one of the original kings of comedy and stars on the hit show, The Neighborhood. Please welcome Cedric the Entertainer. Look at me, I'm coordinating too. You coordinating? You got your good hat on. What's going on? Oh my God. Okay, so. Like, I feel like I like know you, know you, but... I, this us. You this feel how, like that, too? Yeah, yeah, this is how we are. Because we both, you know, we both Midwestern, so we always kind of have this, like, how you doing? You know what we're how doing you, all everybody right. Everybody good? I'm, yes, everybody good. That's how See, we walk up to like each a, other. Like, like we, we, we go way back we or something. Way back. That's how I feel with every time I see you. I know, and people assume that, too. Yes. We got to see each other briefly not too yes. long ago. You was at um, T.D. Jake's, Jake's uh, birthday, birthday party, celebration. which was weird. And I was like, that's Cedric out there? It was oh great, because we had to celebrate a pastor's birthday party. <laughs> I, di I didn't know how to act as a comedian. <laughs> I said, I know there's people in there with Hennessy in their <laughs> purse <laughs> trying to. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> See, well, you know. Hey, man. <laughs> you had your Hennessy set. Yeah, won't he do it? See, he done did it. I'm up there singing Amazing Grace, and you pulling out some Hennessy. What's happening? See? Well, look at it, won't it, won't it well? <laughs> oh, my God. So you grew up in the church? Yes, yeah, you did? definitely, yeah, definitely grew up in the church. That's, like, some of my first jokes was about preachers. Really? And yeah, like, I remember one of my first jokes was I used to do a, a preacher going to McDonald's, because that's what I... Because, you know, because <laughs> preachers always, they preach everywhere. So, you know, he's like, uh, first, give me a large shake. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I want a Big Mac, because a Big Mac got two all beef <laughs> patties. Uh, special. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, lettuce, cheese, uh, pickle, like honey. <laughs> Of singing in that. Did you have you ever been a singer? Were you a singer yeah. before a comedian? Yeah, that's kind of where the entertainer came from. I used to sing a little bit. I had little groups, and you know, like all through like high school, college. Uh -huh. So I would sing, and you know, around around you know. What was the name of your shows? Group? We had a group that was kind of named after our neighborhood we lived in, so uh -huh. it was just called Frostwood. Frostwood? Yeah. I was in a group called Final Notice. Oh, look at that. Look Final at that. Notice. That yes. was kind of that was for, that was kind of bad in the I, hood. I, I, I discovered know. that after a while. Yeah. Uh-oh, see, so y'all oh, ain't have to put. Oh my God. Look at Final Notice, okay? <laughs> Listen, Cedric, did you ever sing while doing stand-up? I did. I, well, I did. One of my first jokes, I used to do Luther Vandross doing the alphabets. That was you like. You gotta do that for us. <clears throat> that's how I used to. Don't y'all wanna hear that? I would be like that. I used to be like, uh. I'm gonna hear this. A, B, C, D. You better say! F, 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 G. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. You better say! Q, I, S, T, V, W, X, Y. I said, that's how, that's how Luther got his weight problem, because he was singing all the girls. Say, Luther, you want some of my lunchbox? <laughs> yo. Oh, my goodness. You need to sing a little bit more. I need to Always just... in the studio. You... No, no, no. Okay. Yeah? Jay, Jennifer, everybody think they can sing till they, you know, like, till they walk, walk up against somebody like yourself, because <laughs> I, I thought I could sing, too, until we said, Jake's. I was like, you know, I was telling myself, I'm going to go up there and sing with you her. And then you start singing. I was like, nah, you know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm straight. <laughs> she got it. <laughs> okay, tell me about this animal that you saw at your house. Oh, so, you know, I live out in the, in the mountains a little bit. And we've seen them all, deer. Mm -hmm. uh, but recently, it was a bear in, in, uh, in, in my neighborhood. And all the neighbors would call and they would say, Oh, Lord. Yeah, look at that, man. And people was like, yeah, it's a bear out here. And I was like, no, there ain't no bear out here. And sure enough, 
the bear was out there getting in the trash, you know. And he come back because he, you know, he found some Nobu in there. And, you fed him? Uh, See, Cedric, I Start telling the, the other bear. bears, like, yo, come over here. They got good <laughs> stuff over here, dog. <laughs> and you have your dogs. Did they go crazy about it? Yeah, I got, but I got little dogs. They so little dogs. Little Yorkies, What's their names? Is Brooklyn and Trixie, which is. <laughs> Who named these dogs? <laughs> you, I've, I've, I've. That's adorable. What they yeah, do about the bear? So they didn't do nothing because Brooklyn, Brooklyn, well, Brooklyn is Brooklyn. She like really, like really Brooklyn, like, <laughs> like, like real talk like that, like. <laughs> And then Trixie is like from the 40s or something, like with the long cigarette, like, darling, pick me up and take me <laughs> to the other side of the room. Oh. And, and, and Brooklyn is like Cardi B or something, because she be. Like Cardi you walk, B? Yeah, I mean, you walk her around the hood and the other dogs be barking, she be like, what's up? <laughs> what's up? What's good? What? You be like, you so you're funny. not going to do nothing. You're not going to do not, nothing. Not, they just got you're that little big dog, big you know? dog energy, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, what's good? What's up? <laughs> Oh my God, so your kids, tell me, you, you have a grandbaby? Yeah, I have a little granddaughter. Uh, Congratulations. How old Halo. is she? She's six now. She's six? Six, she, I, call, I call her my little grand cookie. That's my little cookie wookie. Your cookie? Grand cookie. What's she call you? Popsy. Popsy? Yeah, <laughs> Popsy, she cute. Yeah, she a little cute pie, so you know. Doing great, and then I got you know, I got three kids. So my oldest daughter, that's her mom, Tierra, and then I have a son that's 22 mm -hmm. that works at SoFi and in college, and then I got my youngest daughter, uh, Lucky, and so she's she's doing great and at school, uh, LMU. She kind of goes, she goes to school, but she's at home at school, so mm -hmm. she's away. Oh, oh, but not really. Not you really. Know? Yeah. It's time for her to be away. <laughs> She's away, but not <laughs> quite away, you know, so. I cannot yeah. believe you're here. Oh, my God. Okay, more with Cedric. Yeah. We'll be right back. Uh-oh. <laughs> Baby, why are you frowning? I can't help it, babe. I've been fake smiling all day. <laughs> it's like my face been doing squats. <laughs> but apparently, that's what you have to do if I want to get one of these Yelp stickers. God forbid I look at somebody the wrong way and they write a bad review. <laughs> oh my God. So the show is in the syndication. Like, yeah. you gotta be excited about that. Yeah, I mean, syndication is a wonderful thing. I mean, now it's the news in the neighborhood. The like, neighborhood. Right, right back to back. So I love uh, it so much. It's so good. Yeah. That's my type of show all day long. Can you tell us what the new season is about? So, you know, it, it's great. You know, the show is really about gentrification in mm -hmm. the sense that, uh, you know, Calvin and Tashina, who you had yes. on, is great. Uh, we live in a predominantly black neighborhood, and that neighborhood is starting to, you know, white families are moving in. Uh, in the beginning, I'm resistant to it. My character is kind of the, the opposite of Archie Bunker. Yes, and so, I thought so. Uh, and so, and then through the years, just through getting to know each other, allowing yourself to learn about the other person, right. we've become friends and we've learned to, you know, get along. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what the show is about. And so in this newer season, we're in our fifth season now, you see that we kind of get along. Uh, and now my, my family's starting to grow. My youngest son is engaged. Mm. We're, now we got to stretch a different way. We got to see if this new girl going to work in our, in our family and if yeah. that going to work. <laughs> and, and then, you know, the, the people are coming after my, my shop now. Like, now it's more than about the homes. It's about the businesses. Yes. And so these things start to change. And so questions get asked. We're like, do I want to sell my home is one thing. But now when somebody wants to buy my business and I can make a lot of money, that kind of changed everything for me. So yes. these are the kind of questions that get asked about what the world and where you are and, and growth and Reality. how do you change and what do you think and th yeah. this is what we want to show in the show, so. That's dope. Okay. And Patti LaBelle played yeah. your mama. What was that like? She needs oh, to Oh, yeah. So like, I had Patti LaBelle play my mom, uh -huh. it was, uh, which was a blessing, man, because uh, she reminded me a lot of my real mother. And... Uh, it, it was a blessing, and it, it was awesome. But she came during the COVID, so uh -huh. you know, Miss Patty, she liked to cook. She couldn't. You ain't get a plate. Me. I ain't get a plate or a pie. She couldn't bring no pie. What? Not even a patty pie. I said, Miss Patty. 
<laughs> no, so it, it was, it was, but it was lovely. She was all, she was just super sweet, yeah. and uh, we had a great time, and it was really a blessing to be able to have her come and be a part of the show. Mm. Uh, so you know, that's that's a great thing about having a sitcom too, because I had I had her come on the show, and I had Tracy Morgan play my brother. Uh -huh. So we we ain't had a good time on yes. that, man. It, will you will you ever have Steve Harvey on the show? It definitely, of course, I love to have Steve on the show. Yeah. And I hear y'all vacation a lot together. What's yeah, that like? Yeah, so I hang with Steve quite a bit. Uh, you know, it's just hard when you hang with Steve because <laughs> every question is a family feud. Is question. it? I mean, oh, I need to go on this vacation. You know I love family feud. I mean, you can't sit down to eat top five reasons <gasps> I have in dinner. You like Steve? You know, no, no. But you know, you go to Steve. <laughs> And Steve, you know, Steve be sharp, yeah. man. You get on the he plane with sharp. Steve and you get ready to get off and he and change clothes. I'm he like, bro. He clothes on a flight? I didn't know you get to change clothes on the flight, Steve. Oh, my goodness. This is another level of rich. I wasn't ready for this rich right here. He, he is serious about his suit. Yeah, he will change clothes mid-flight. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, I just, I'm going to get some different shoes I could put on. But that's <laughs> Okay, so wait a minute. You got your start with him or something like that, right? Yeah. Tell so, us about that. So Steve used to have a comedy club in Dallas, and I was I was stuck down there one time doing a different comedy club, and I went to him, and um, I was stuck. And I, mm -hmm. and I was like, yo, and he, he put me on stage, and he said, well, if you come back each night, I'll see what I can do to give you a few dollars to get home. And so I did that, and he gave me 200 bucks to get home. So I drove home and we became Aww. friends and he brought me back to be a headliner. And that's how we end up being buddies for many years. Y'all are so amazing uh, together. Like the classic yeah. Kings of Comedy. We'll be right back. Y'all, we're back with Cedric the Entertainer. Okay, so your character on The Neighborhood is very opinionated. Mm. So I want to get your opinion <laughs> on some things, okay? Okay. This should be real interesting. Yeah. Cedric, tell me what you think about trick or treating. Uh, well, I only like trick or treating because you know I grew up in the hood, and that's the only time you get to look in people's houses. So, okay, you just go. I, that's why I send my little kids up there trick or treating, and I'll be all in the door, looking at them. <laughs> seeing what they got in yeah, there. Looking there, like oh, I know they ain't got their grandma in the living room right there. <laughs> I, I, okay, I'm gonna yeah. look that way. Mm -hmm. But keep my door closed. Please can't be looking too <laughs> What you looking at? Okay. Yeah. Getting to the airport right before a flight. No, don't play with me like that. No, you got to get, oh, you got to be there. I love to be there in, through security, uh -huh. on time. When they call your section, you okay. get on the plane. Because I, I need all my, I need my hair you need space. Your space. I need that, I need to wipe down the seat. Oh, you want one of them? You, if you. Okay. If you, if I'm A and you B, go on, get in there. Don't, I ain't, I'm not get, keep getting up, ma'am. <laughs> so you like to be on the outside? I like to be on the inside. You like to be on the outside? I like to be on the inside. That. I ain't got all that. Yeah, I'm on the inside. So you go on, go on ahead now. Okay, see, but I like the board last. So you like the board first? I like to, yeah, I like to be on the plane. Because you need to see what's going board, on. And I put like, head down, hoodie Do you be up, watching like the people, this. making sure everybody all right? Okay. Oh, yeah, you I definitely like keep that. an eye on everybody like this. And, they, and anybody suspicious, <laughs> coughing, you know. <laughs> you can't cough, sneeze two, <laughs> three, three times. I'm calling them over there, uh, check seven B. Check seven B! You better check it. You got you one more cough, you check. got one it's more a, sneeze. Somebody sniffling back there, check seven B. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Getting older. Yeah, getting older, you know, it's, it's tough, you know, because you still feel young, but now, you know, as a, especially as a guy, you know, we usually step into the car, now we got a back end, you know, like, eh. and we got a noise to sit down and one to get up. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh, my goodness. We got two different noises. <laughs> okay. What do you think about sagging when, when people pants sag? That, that's ridiculous. It's right? ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it just got... And it started out, it's, it started out where it was like, I kind of got it at first, because it was like, look, if you got on some Versace underwear, sure, you might want to show them they $85. Okay. Know? But now, they, <laughs> these boys wearing their pants all the way down here to... Why they even got them on? I mean, really, just, just carry them with you. Just take your pants. <laughs> And Carry them with yeah, you. Just, just take your pants and wear it like a polo sweater. Just <laughs> throw it around. And... I really want to hear this one. Okay, couples wearing matching outfits. Look, look, if, if you... Look, 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 look. <laughs> See them? See them right there? Couples wear. If you're not going to a state fair or 
in a stepper's group. Look at him. <laughs> you, 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 look, you can't wear that. If, like, you're not doing the trapeze acts together. <laughs> Y'all not the flying the wind, the wind is, you know, No, no. I don't know. I mean, they look cute. I'm going to have to give okay. them something right you, you, there. It's okay. Y'all get a pass. Yeah, you have to get the a pass over there. Okay. I don't know how that other lady got in it, though. She right next to him. She in the group, too. It's two, three, y'all. <laughs> she seemed like she got in the group with y'all. How'd she get in the group? Okay. I ain't never had one of these, but deep fried turkeys. Oh. Yeah? That's good. That's good? It's good. It's good. Deep fried turkeys is a good thing. The only thing I'm saying is that you just don't need to lose an arm to do it, you oh, know? Oh, what that A lot of these people, they don't know how to drop that turkey down in there, and they get scared, and they, and they, and they grease come popping out of there, and a lot of people lose, all this go off. Oh, like, no. You know, so... So we eating the hand Yeah, the yeah, too? so oh, you don't know if it's just turkey. That's just... what I'm saying. It's, it's like... We want it to be just turkey yeah, now. Yeah, just deep fried turkey, not right hand. <laughs> uh, Cedric, I got one more, because I can't believe you're here. I'm so happy you're here. Okay. Online shopping. Oh, what man. Is he that's, say? Online shopping is fun, but you know, like it took away from what we grew up on. Right. Like, cause they got, they got, they got, they got Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, what happened to Hook Up Wednesday? The... Okay. Where you go to the barbershop and you're like, hey, man, y'all got them TVs, you know what I mean? This where, that, this where we used to get our deals, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Randy, you know, everybody yes. know Randy. Randy. Randy got the deal. Randy, you, know? you checked in his door when yeah, he opened yeah. up for them trick or treats. Hey, you saw like, he had them TVs. Yeah, Randy got them TVs. You like, Randy got them TVs? You're like, all right, bet. <laughs> that was the best deal you can get. Now that's over, man. It's you, over now. Yeah, now you. Oh, my God. Amazon just show up and just bring it to you. Just bring it to you. Thank you so much Sorry. for being here. Will you please, please, please no, come don't. back? Uh, we enjoyed you so much. Uh, don't you just love them? Uh, the Neighborhood airs Mondays at 8 on CBS. We'll be right back. I am so excited for this, y'all. This season, we've partnered with MasterCard in support of their Strivers Initiative, which I've been honored to be a part of. All season long, we're going to highlight and celebrate amazing black women business owners. Yes, sir. Our next guest is the owner of Kama Bookstore and Social Hub in Flint, Michigan. Please welcome Egypt Otis. Oh my God. How are you? It's, I am so good. This is so beautiful and amazing. Oh, my goodness. It's amazing. Well, give her a hand. Thank you. It's amazing, you know, to see you and what you're doing. What made you want to open up a bookstore? I would say it first started when I got my GED. It really paved the way for me to opening up a bookstore. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I felt like I could pretty much conquer the world. Yes. And that actually catapulted me into going to college. It introduced my love of books, and I felt like oh my goodness, more people need this information. They need this access. Right. And that started my work in activism and also advocacy-related jobs. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much wanted to start a business, a bookstore my whole life. And then the pandemic happened. And I unfortunately lost my job. And at that moment, it gave me the courage and the circumstances to pretty much open up my own business that combined advocacy, that combined literature, and those personal experiences I grew up with. Listen at that. Thank you. And how is your bookstore making history? Oh, my goodness. So I am the only black woman-owned bookstore in my city. So I feel an immense amount of responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure representation is there. So we've become really the epicenter for anything multiculturalism. We also support a lot of local talent, musician, artists. Nice. Provide them with a platform for the community to hear. And we're here two years later. And that is so you. awesome. I love that you're paving the way for others. Yeah. Okay, we've heard about Flint because of the water crisis. What do you want people to know about Flint? Right now, Flint's going through a renaissance period, mm -hmm. and we're seeing this burst of art. Everywhere you go, you can see a mural. You're going to hear music. You're going to see local talent. So I, right now, we're really trying to figure out, like, who we are. Right. With the water crisis and things that's been happening in our community, we're really starting to change uh, the page pretty much. And we're starting to just be this, this place of creativity and opening new businesses and really good stuff coming. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, what do kids mean to you? Well, I'm a mother. Your mom? Yep, so I have an 11-year-old little girl. I have an 11-year-old stepson. Aww. 
And I also do a lot of work and mentorship with young adults, such as myself. I went through those challenges growing up. And oh, that's there them they right are. there. That's them. Are those your babies? Yes. And I serve on a few different boards related to kids who are going through a lot of challenges like I did growing up. And I'm also doing a lot of mentorship programs rooted in literacy and entrepreneurship. That's awesome. Thank you. So this is such a typical bookstore. What makes Come Up special? I pretty much call Kama a book bodega because you can go in there and you're going to get some products that's locally made. You can get some art. You can get a book. You can get uh, your music and your cultural experience. Ooh. It's a pretty much a little bit of everything when you go in there. That sounds awesome. Thank I need to you. get to that. That sounds like my type of zhush, as I say. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Well, with Egypt after this, we're back with the owner of Come Up Bookstore and Social Hub, Egypt Otis. Okay, so girl, now I ain't never even did this. You were recently featured in MasterCard's commercial for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Yes. That's major. Yes. It's unbelievable. I'm still having a difficult time processing it, to be honest with Do you. Do y'all see this? <laughs> you guys have it. That is awesome. Oh my God. That is so powerful. Wow. Like you're making such an incredible impact. Like you. you ever think your story, when you came up with the concept to come out with a bookstore that you would, you know, impact so many? Uh, oh my goodness, no. You know, I really just wanted to make an impact in my community locally and to have such an opportunity like this to be part of the MasterCard Strivers Initiative and to be featured in a commercial right. in a movie that I consider a cultural touchstone yeah. is of greater significance to me. Like, yes. it's, it's been crazy. That is crazy. So amazing. What would you tell other people who have a dream to open a, up a business? I would say to challenge yourself be comfortable with being a little bit uncomfortable, mm. invest in yourself, and take the risk, because it's worth take it. The risk. You know, live in your purpose. Why not? That's a beautiful message. Right? Thank you. I'm curious to know <laughs> what's next in store for, you, for your, your business. Well, of course, I want to sustain it and stay open, mm -hmm. but I really do measure success by impact. So I want to be continuing okay. to make an impact, but of course, you need capital, you need resources, That's right? That's right. So MasterCard has been very grateful to my bookstore. They gave it a makeover. They gave me capital so oh, I can nice sustain goodness. my business. So I want to take my mission mobile, and I want to have more of a larger impact in communities such as mine who has low literacy levels. So I'm working on some stuff to have more of a wide initiative, so. Yeah. You will, I thank believe you. it. Good looking out, MasterCard. Well, I think you're incredible and so does MasterCard. MasterCard wants to keep spotlighting black women business owners who have an impact on their community and provide tools and resources to help their businesses thrive. So they're giving $25,000. <laughs> If you want the chance to be a part of the Strivers Initiative and maybe even be featured on the show, visit our website and share your story. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.